Hello, everyone, and welcome back to the Terradrome. My name is KJ, aka Black Gingus, and I am joined by a very special guest, uh, Mr. Yojo, A R A H himself, uh, Dr. Giles Gifford. Giles, how's it going, man? Going well, Kevin. Thank you so much for having me. Pleasure to be here. Goodness, thank you for joining us. Uh, I just want to say, first off, uh, you're one of my favorite customizers out on the interwebs right now. Uh, I love your attention to de uh, detail. Uh, your dedication to um, getting the paint right, the decals right, incorporating uh, vehicles and play sets like the, uh, I believe you had the Watchtower from, goodness, I'm starting to blink. It's from an Etsy site, uh, Pixies, Pixies Designs. Mm -hmm. yep. It's fantastic. Um, so, man, um, let's go ahead and jump right into it. When you're doing yeah, a but... custom figure, um, what was it specifically about the G.I. Joe line that really drew you to making your own um, HD 4K versions, <laughs> six inch of these figures. Right. Well, let's see, it was uh, two summers ago, <clears throat> pandemic was hitting pretty hard. Yeah. Uh, I had painted uh, like Warhammer figures, the little 28 millimeter scale figure since I was 10. Uh, I was studying for a board exam, my EM boards, and uh, I just kind of came across the new classified line. I said, whoa, those mm -hmm. are pretty cool. Yeah. And so in between board studies, I ordered a couple, you know, just kind of a little, little, little reward as I'm studying. I got them. They were super cool. I got started with like Duke and Roadblock. Yeah. And I looked at them. I was like, this is great. And then I had the other toys because I still have all my old GI Joes. Uh, and I said, well, this is close. This looks great. I kind of, for my personal aesthetic, I'd like it to look just like the old one. And so Roadblock was the first one I did somewhere back there. It was up there. Um, and it turned out great. It turned out really fun. I just applied all the techniques that I'd done since I was 10, painting these tabletop minis with the washes, with the highlights, with the shading uh, to a far larger scale, which in a lot of aspects, it's far more forgiving, mm -hmm. but far more difficult. Like uh, with these smaller minis, you can paint the face and get the eyes good enough. And then, you know, looking at them, eh, it looks pretty good. But with these larger scale figures, especially when you're taking pictures, like, you know, if you got googly eyes, <laughs> they're really going to come up pretty big. Yeah. Or if you, if you, you know, mess up a skin shade or, mm -hmm. you know, draw, draw a corner of a lip up like that, you're going to see it pretty big. Um, so anyway, I started with that. I did uh, Roadblock, then I did Duke. And then I said, hmm, this uh, Shang-Chi figure would make a good quick kick. And so I, that was my first actual custom. And if you ever look at my Instagram, as I post them is as I've made them. So you can kind of see the progression. And it was, I mean, I'd never done anything like that before. So it was just a, a huge learning process for me. And then I saw all the wonderful folks doing the 3D stuff. And I'm like, yeah. oh boy, because I also love the vehicles. And so mm. it just became, you know, originally I was only going to do like, I don't know, maybe a dozen, like cool little hobby. And then it just blossomed into, into what it is. So now I'm, not running out of Joe's and I haven't, I've yet to do any of the Cobras, um, yeah. but I'm still finding little gems. Like uh, I want to do ambush, low light, you know, so I, I still have a bunch of them, um, but I don't have the actual figure. So I have to buy them on eBay or, you know, mm -hmm. Amazon, whatever, get them. Cause, Oh, that guy looks cool. I bet you I could do this, that. And the other thing with that guy, I get them. I'll stare at the little figure for a long time. I have a, I'm sure most of us do a fodder box, just like yeah. a graveyard box full of figures. So with every figure, I'll dump it out. I'll look at my graveyard and I'll say, hmm, well, that torso might work. Uh, those legs might work. Those arms might work. And so a lot of guys will use uh, the hair dryers. Yeah. I personally like to boil them because okay. that gives me just a lot of pliability. I know a lot of people don't like boiling them because it uh, messes with the integrity of the plastic. Uh, but for me, I haven't really noticed that to be a big issue. I'll boil them in one special pot because I don't want to use the pots my family eats out of. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> um boil them up and kind of do this frankensteinian you know mix and match if it gets close enough cool if not magnets have been helpful like okay, yeah. drilling out arms putting in magnets getting the shoulder in uh or the legs um and then i can get it close enough like that and then for the rest i will just whip out my green stuff if you guys don't know at home green stuff is this uh epoxy blue Right, half blue, half yellow. You mix it together and you have about maybe 45 minutes to an hour before it starts to harden. It takes about four hours total to harden. Um, I use that and then I have a whole set of dental tools and I just sculpt like mad. 
And sometimes the sculpting takes longer than the painting because you can only sculpt like uh, like this guy, this is crankcase. Oh yeah. And I had to sculpt his whole sweater. So, you know, and, and his web gear. So I had to, you know, start there, you sculpt that bit. Cause once you start sculpting here, inevitably your fat thumb is gonna hit that and mess mm -hmm. up all the work you did there. So you gotta do it piece by piece by piece. And I don't know, this guy was, I think this is a Marvel Legends figure. Okay. Uh, but he, you know, he had one of the classic Marvel Legends torsos where it was all muscle, but this guy needed a sweater. So yeah. I made him a sweater instead. No, that's so beautiful. that's the, yeah, that's the sculpting piece. Um, and really every figure I do has some degree of sculpting in it to get the look as close to the originals as I can make it mm -hmm. uh, while still keeping it, you know, somewhat updated. Um, some, some are better than others. Oh, well, I think you're doing a, a great job because it's just, you know, for example, um, when you're, you're Blizzard, was a was a favorite of mine and it's like oh. as far as you translating that mm -hmm. that arctic joe with that uh whenever you have the skis like even putting on the uh, the joe logos from like the 2009 <laughs> movie yeah uh, which like a lot of people don't give that logo enough love like whatever the quality of those movies are i just love that logo so i love you incorporating little tidbits like that like the history of the joes sure. um or well, just that one, mm -hmm. that one had a lot of sculpting but a bigger shout out to a gentleman named emilio z uh, who did, he's a, a buddy of mine and we've been partnering back and forth. He's actually to this date, the only one uh, aside from another fellow DJ uh, that I've actually given uh, a figure to. Uh, so it started back with Starduster. Uh, we traded gear. I think that one was for barbecue. He 3D modeled and printed me barbecue gear. And the trade was that I would print him out or I would uh, make him a Starduster. Um, and then I did him a fridge as well. So he's he's the only guy in the world that has a couple of mine uh, that aren't sitting right behind me. Man, that's... Aside from one other fella, DJ Palooza, who I just gave to because he's a fantastic guy. Yeah, yeah, DJ Palooza, shout out to him too. Um, I believe his, uh, what's that website? I'm blanking on it, but uh, so I'm gonna uh, say- New Review. New Review dot net, yep. that's right. Yeah. Uh, but anyway, oh. Emilio was kind enough to uh, make and model me out uh the kind of like snowmobile backpack get up that he has yeah. so a lot of it is i don't have that skill i don't have a 3d printer i'm not allowed to get one i'm allowed to spend money on it but uh and i get it i think if i had a 3d printer my my little room here would be far more uh chaotic um but i'll partner with various people in the community when there's so many talented folks yeah. um, and it's all about creating relationships continuing those relationships and then promoting them so uh, this gentleman, like I said, Amelia Z just did a fantastic job with this and many other sculpts. He actually just did me a, a Max and Spearhead loadout. Okay. Uh, which I'll, I got to figure out the Bobcat piece of that. But uh, yeah, great talent. Uh, when you're figuring out those pieces, it's like, uh, and I noticed, like, it makes a total, a lot of sense that you have that original figure that you're still collecting vintage Joe to add to your collection. So it makes mm -hmm. sense to have it. But that's just, you're able to really zero in on those details if you have that right in your hands. Whereas yeah. like I would go to yojo.com and just try to find as many pictures as I could. And that would help me get close. But right, like, right. I feel like there's some special sauce in there having the original figure in your hand. For um, sure. And, and how I've chosen to display them, forgive the shaky camera no, for no, a second. No, no, that's great. Oh yeah, let's see it. Let's take a look. But, uh, as you, I can't even tell if you can see, but as I as I display them, I do it with the original Joes, yeah. and I do the file cards as well. Yeah. Um, with the vehicles, with all the play sets, I just try to keep them all. Uh, whoop! See, this is my wife warned me about this. <laughs> At least I don't have a poster behind me like Travis <laughs> falling down on his head. Um, but anyway, how how I wanted to display them was with the original figure next to my creation. So it, you're right, you're absolutely right. Having the original in hand, say, oh, well, there, it looks like there's a weird knife there, a weird pouch there. And oftentimes it doesn't make sense, but I, I keep it uh, you know, true to the original. Yeah, and that helps you keep like the spirit of the, uh, the sculpting and the design, because these guys are toy makers and they were making them for the kids. And in a way you're sort of making this for the big kid, the kid <laughs> right. and all of us, right? Yeah, yeah. Um, I definitely get inspired. Like I got inspired by taking a look at 
pixie designs or being like, okay, if I'm going to make Walt Bill, I got to get either that Skyhawk mm -hmm. or I got to just be like, okay, like how, how are we going to make a dragonfly? We're going to have yeah. to, like, I'm going to have to put some money aside to give a, I already have a, uh, this is an Overwatch Ultimates figure that has a cowboy hat. It's like mm -hmm. that hat is going to Walt Bill. Yep. I will, I will yep. figure the rest out later. No, you're absolutely right. A lot of it is detective work online, finding, you know, thinking of what you want and then finding the right right piece for it. Like uh, I did a Ricondo a while back and I yeah, used it was a, a Deadpool figure, but the hat just wasn't right. And then uh, the Jurassic Park line came out and uh, just uh, the Muldoon figure had yeah. just a perfect hat. So I've switched that up. Um, and there's part of me that wants to go and take that, tear down the old post and post it with the new thing. But, you know, it is what it is because it's part of the growth. Mm -hmm. um, but there's a few figures there that I've been able to update as new bits and pieces have become available. Yeah. But a lot of it's, uh, you know, just straight up detective internet, you know, finding things on eBay, finding things like Dollhouse Miniatures is a great yeah. uh, resource uh, for hats and stuff. Like the hard hat I got for Toll Booth was from them. Um, eBay, a lot of, you know, a lot of shops in China. So, you know, word of warning when you order something from China, you can want to think two months ahead because it's yeah. going to take a while to get to you. Um, and so that's how I kind of roll it. I, I have four or five projects in my brain at any one time, knowing full well that, you know, it's going to take a while to have any of those come to completion. Okay. Oh, well, that sort of reminds me of, this is going to sound weird, but like being a songwriter, whereas mm -hmm. like if you're working on lyrics and you're working on like on a phrase that you're trying to nail down or you're working on several things at once, right? Because it's almost like an album like this. This is like your double LP, basically. <laughs> um, so let me ask you, like, so do you like freestyle off the top of your head or do you, you like you're writing everything down? You use a word oh, document or something like that? I'll freestyle. I'll just, you know, staring at the figure, thinking what will come in more often. Than, well, not more often, but on the occasion, it breaks my heart. But sometimes I'll just scrap something because the look isn't right. So I will yeah. spend 20 hours trying to put something together. And it's all, you know, well, maybe this will work if I get this just right. And then I look at it and it's, like, nah, it's just not there. And I'm a bit of a perfectionist. So I have to it, it, it has to be just right for me. And, you know, it's great that you know, people have responded so positively for to these. But, uh, you know, at the end of the day, I'm the one who sits there in my yeah. you know, game room here and stares at the figures like a sad old man no man it's a. Uh, I I feel like perfectionism sometimes can be less of a propellant and sometimes it feels like an enemy like it's an enemy of art you know it's yeah. like because like perfection just doesn't exist I try to be a completionist so mm -hmm. sometimes so for example one of the the customs I just finished for my friend Dave Story was a Crimson Cobra Commander and that took me a long time to do because there's a lot of detail work there was a moment where it was like the red, I was trying to match the red on the Cobra Gauntlet of mm -hmm. Cobra Commander. It just wasn't right. I took a toothbrush and I just scrubbed it. I just started all over. And well, you it, did it to the next level too. I was watching when you were making that custom and you had every appendage on its own little stand yeah, yeah. to paint every, so you, I mean, I used to do that when I first started, take them all apart and then put them all together. Um, but I, I mean, it's important to note for those who are trying to make these at home and they want to make them and they want to, you know, play with them and have them be another facet of their classified series or their Valiver series. The ones I make aren't that. The ones I make are straight up little pieces of art. They're not meant to, you know, go outside in the mud because the paint's going to wear off. The paint's mm -hmm. going to chip. It's, you know, I'm painting on a canvas rather than, you know, uh, making a playable toy, which I think uh, would be better if, you know, for inking or, you know, uh, where they put the dye in, you know, put the figures yeah. in the dye and then the, the paint doesn't rub. Um, that said, I mean, they can be posable and, and uh, you know, for photographs, but oftentimes when I take a photograph, I'll look at them and go, oh, there's a little paint rub there and I'll <laughs> have to go back and I'll have to, you know, touch it up. So yeah. by no means are my figures meant to be something that, you know, your kid can take i mean they could play with them but they you know probably get destroyed mm -hmm. but that's fine for me for what i'm going for which is just like i said art no it's no they're beautiful uh they're um so you're really taking them as statuettes mm -hmm. in a sense right with and i mean they're they're all fully posable they all you know they all articulate yeah. as they're meant to um but i, I to circle back, what I was saying is I, I first started doing, you know, what you did with yours and, and how you did yours, you took it all apart, you painted it up and 
my guess is that your figures don't run into the same problems that my later figures do. My earlier figures, I did that very same thing to. And you can move them around and you, I did the sealer on them or sometimes mm -hmm. the uh, the goop sealer. Uh, I forget what it's called. Um, I use mostly, Mod Podge. That's so. it, Mod Podge. Yeah. Um, and then I, I went to the spray sealers. And then realistically, uh, when I would do the sealers, it would dull the colors too much for my personal tastes. Mm -hmm. Um, and then I realized, you know, what, what's the benefit of this? Because I'm not really using them to play. I'm using okay. them to just have them sit there on my shelf, which, mm -hmm. you know, some people may not like. But for me, that's what what I like. Um, let's see. What else you want to know? Well, <laughs> well, I was just about to mention, uh, sometimes it can take a lot of planning. Uh, so, for example, with the Crimson Cobra Commander I had, um, I... It was a gift for a friend who's a customizer himself. Um, mm -hmm. And uh, so I knew that whatever top seal he was going to do, like he could add things, he could add accents or trims, and he could be the one to finish it off. But mm -hmm. if I was making it for someone else, and I knew that, let's say I have a gloss Mod Podge mm -hmm. that I want to keep metallic um, elements, or if I want to take it down a stop and use satin instead, right? Mm -hmm. And then of course I have the mat. The mat takes down a lot of the shine, makes it dull, right. and you have what have to like plan ahead. So if I had something that really pops and I know that I'm going to apply a top seal that lowers it, then that's what I would do, right? So right now I'm trying to experiment with decals because it's like you put on the gloss coat because it needs to go on a smooth surface. Then you put on the decal, but you got to apply um, Microsol to the decal first. Then you put it on, Oops. then you apply Oops. Microset, and then mm -hmm. you top it off with another either a gloss coat or a satin coat or the matte coat, depending on how you want it to look. It's like all these different things. And it's a lot of trial and error. I would tell friends of mine, get the cheap figs, go to Dorkside Toys, go mm -hmm. to Amazon, get them used, get them like new. You can get a uh, Entertainment Earth, um, just near mint or damaged box, get them cheap and then just go nuts until you yeah, work on your technique. Yeah. And then you can really take those things that work for you and apply them to what ha what you have to nail what has to be the masterpiece yeah and i mean that's that's the whole beauty of this it's all just getting out there and doing it people ask you know i wish i could do this like you if i could do this you could do this because yeah. i didn't know what i was doing when i started and i just it was fun and so i kept doing it and i kept making them and you know they kept turning out you know good enough for me and then, so i just kept doing it and it just if it wasn't fun it wasn't enjoyable i wouldn't do it right, right. um but you, I mean, you're, you're kind of, you know, make figures for your friends. My, I've always, always shied away from that because I, I feel that and maybe it's the perfectionist in me. People would be disappointed once they got the figures. You know, if I, if I gave them the figures and they tried to do, you know, karate kick and it didn't, you know, then they have a, a piece of paint rub or the, you know, the decal sheared off or some such. So that's why I don't, I don't do anything. I don't sell anything. I don't, you know, uh, do commissions or anything like that. Um, I do give away things, but, mm -hmm. uh, I do have a lot of respect for those that, you know, make this into, you know, some kind of business because what mm. they have to put out is far better than what I have, what I have to do. Mm. Cause they Don't have to put so out, short. Well, they have to put out a product that, that can withstand, you know, wear and tear. I don't, I have to put out a product that I put on my shelf and I get to stare at. All right. Uh, but I think, I, I think if you were to make a gift for, someone's child where it wouldn't have to be ultra high def and what makes them playable. I don't, I don't think you're too far away from that, but for, for me, um, when I'm making a gift for a friend, and that's why that custom, that Crimson Cobra commander, for example, took so long was because it was for a friend. He does take photographs. So I know mm -hmm. it's like, okay, I got to, like, I had to figure out the paint rub and that meant adding water to a point. It almost became putting a wash on the joints. Yeah. instead of applying paint and so it just take longer because i knew like it would need to move without shearing off um and who's to say that i i could the point is is that perfectionism kept me from giving this gift to someone and right, i right. and then i hated that so i was like this thing's only going to get as good as it gets like it's not going right. to be like the star wars special edition that i'm always tinkering with i'm always adding cg jabba the huts and dobacks and stuff like no it's like this is good enough and I like if someone gave this to me, I would love it. I'm going to give it away. And it's right, like this right. is for you. Um, and he loved it. I was like, you sure? He's like, yeah, man. But what about that? What about this? And I'm like, no. Well, like like any any artist, you're always your own worst critic, right? Yeah. 
And so when, when people contact me, and I, I try to be very, very responsive to anybody and everybody who contacts me with any questions or any you know, thoughts, um, what I always come back to is if you like what you're making, if you're happy, that's all that, no, it doesn't matter. Nothing else matters than if you like, if you dig the toy you're making, that's all that matters. And it's great if other people do, but if then, you know, every, not everybody's going to like everything you put out, but it doesn't matter. Yeah. Yeah. And I had to, I had to cross that Rubicon because that's what's keeping me from posting my customs mm -hmm. and whatnot. Uh, when I was doing the, uh, my OG 13, my project OG 13, it really was just a paint guide for me at first. Mm -hmm. And then when I showed friends of mine, they're like, Whoa, blah, blah. I'm like, what? It was just, I just took some promos <laughs> and changed a few colors and I really wanted to make it look right. Just so I had, once again, like I said, I'm picture based. So mm -hmm. I was able to take those photos and Photoshop and be like, and already apply the methodology that I would, if I wanted to make short views, if I wanted to make, you know, a sunbow snake eyes and, you know, or if I wanted to make the version four snake eyes that was yeah, like yeah. with the whites and blues. So just getting ahead of that. So I had something for me, people dug it. So I posted on Facebook and then I posted on Instagram and I got just a lot of really good vibes and a lot of, a lot of love basically. And I really appreciated that. So I'm ready to take those things to the next step. I li literally just got myself another spider armor so I could have the shin armor and the forearms for zap, no, for grand slam and flash. Oh, so, I'm going to look into that. Cause I've been thinking about how to pull those off. Well, you, you know, let's just see give if, me an idea, my friend. Well, let's see. Let's see what I have here. So what I was using the, uh, this is from the Deadpool Paladin. And mm -hmm. Paladin, what's tricky about him is that he was originally, this vest is from the Marvel Knights, the Marvel Legends Blade. So they recycled a Blade vest and gave it to Deadpool's Paladin. So I'm actually going to take my buddy Tony Romo's, our buddy Tony Romo's recipe for Blade and use Paladin as a base. And maybe a couple of the, um, we talked about Gnome's Paint Shop. Uh, he has great vests for Blade. Uh, oh, he has does. a good yeah, yeah. head sculpt, the Mac 11 from Blade. Oh, he's got great stuff all around. But basically, I would take this, and um, you see here, let's see, let's, let me get this out the way. So the torso here already kind of has like a grid-like pattern. So it's mm -hmm. not exactly like the, the fine detailed grid that's on here. But I would take this, I would take soap and water, wash it off, and then I would apply this. This is Molotow Liquid Chrome. Uh -huh. So uh, shout out to Mark to Design. He was using um, Airbrush Liquid Chrome on a Sky Shark uh, that he had a 112 scale. I saw that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And the thing with Molotow, let's see if you can see that, with Molotow is that once you apply Liquid Chrome onto it, you got to let it dry. And from what I heard, you have to let it cure for a week. So a week, a week, a oh, week. Wow. like just put it under like a cardboard right. box or like or whatever, or a glass jar and just let it cure. And then you'll be able to like rub it and put your fingerprints on it or whatever. But uh, I would basically take that, um, combine that with the chrome that's already on the spider armor that's on the um, forearms and the shins. And then I would basically that, is how I would arrive at the silver pad version of a Grand Slam. So like, so for example, here's Spider Armor. Mm -hmm. So you see he already oh, has, yeah. he already has something like that, but it's kind of spidery. Yeah, yeah. Where the Paladin isn't. So I would basically take this and combine it with Paladin. And yep. that's how I would get that silver chrome version of Grand Slam. And then for Flash, I could either put a translucent paint on top of the chrome or skip the chrome and just paint that chest, paint that chest here, and then apply paint to the shin armor and the forearms because it has that green and red that goes yeah. on the flash. So that's what yeah. I would do, Clever. but anyone could do that. You're a whiz kid with green putty. I have Millie putt that I'm still trying to learn on how to work with that. Dental um, tools, dental tools. Dental tools, okay. Save the day. And um, you can also get different versions of the putty where it's like a finer grain than mm -hmm. others if you really want to like really get the detail down. But yeah, it's like, there's a lot of planning, but you can only plan for so much. If you're not careful, you can over plan and yeah, then you'll yeah. never get the figure done. You'll never start it. So my, that would be my advice. 
it's good to have a plan, but it's also good to just jump into that water. To and start. Swim. Oh man, how many times you sat there, looked at all the pieces, and then just said, "I don't know if I should do this. I don't know," and then just jump in. Yep. And you know what? Worst case scenario, it doesn't work out. You start over, but you learn from it. Yeah, exactly. And and I definitely hope that for anyone watching this episode or or anything else that's on YouTube with customizing our action figures, to just go for it. You know, it's good. Yeah. You don't. Oh, go go ahead. I don't know. I'm agreeing with you. Oh, thanks. Go for it. <laughs> I I think um like you said yourself like if you're not careful you can be your own worst enemy and it and it shouldn't be that like it's definitely something that you have to keep it fun right so when Otherwise, you're updating what's the point yeah so when you're updating the figures in your toy world what are some of the things that you do to bring them into the year 2022 or perhaps you have them sort of like in the not so distant future that kind of thing like what how do you modernize those designs well a lot of the time it's what's available right so I'll, I'll try to get as close to the original as i can um but sometimes i'll have happy little accidents i think uh chris johnson is uh the the biggest promoter of happy little accidents when yeah. making things um you just go with it and i think he has he has a wonderful saying kind of let the let the figure speak to you as to how you're going to make it so you know, i have another one here so this is uh keel hall yeah it's keel hall doesn't doesn't have an eye patch but when I saw the Nick Fury head, let me pop his little hat off. Okay. So I made him two Nick Fury heads. They both have eye patches. This one is so he can fit the, the pipe he has in his head. Mm -hmm. And the hat goes on both. Now, the original Keel Hall didn't have an eye patch, but I thought, well, that really fits. And that looks really good. And I like this head so much that I'm just going to make it happen. Um, so a lot of it's just, you know, I have the original figure. I'll I'll do my best to get it as close as it can. Sometimes it sometimes it lands, sometimes it doesn't. Um, but when I update it, it's not really update into like uh, modern warfare, like the new guns. You know, a lot of these guns are laser guns, you know, whatever <laughs> yeah. the hell that means. And you know, but I for me it's about like nostalgia. For me, when I'm making these toys, I often remember actual adventures I had with these little guys. And so I try to keep it as close to the original toy as I can okay. um, with just, I mean, like, like Bazooka. Bazooka, yeah. I did a Luke Cage upper and a cable bottom. Um, mm -hmm. They didn't really have Bazooka stuff. So I had to, you know, make his helmet and I had to figure out his backpack and his Bazooka. But he also didn't have a sidearm. He also didn't have a knife. I'm like on the, on the original figure. So updates like that, like, you know, all my guys have little, you know, secondaries and third, you know, third weapons and all that. Mm -hmm. um yeah i mean i don't i don't i get as close as i can but i don't kill myself over it yeah mm -hmm. and That's it really works out and then really it's just me getting to the point where i can do my favorite thing which is the painting the painting is far by far and away my favorite piece of this hobby that's what i it's like my meditation. Yeah. I, I sit there in my little my little area. I, I put my documentaries on or often I'll listen to like medical lectures and I'll just paint away. And it's, you know, it's meditative for me, meditative for me. Um, no, yeah, it's soothing. Yeah. Everything in my life is so big and so crazy and so wild that to be able to sit there and, you know, work on little details to me just helps me recenter and helps me, mm -hmm. you know, go back to work. Yeah, it's good. So the it's, painting. I've I've been asked a lot about the painting, and uh, this might be a good opportunity for me to kind of break down how I do it. Everybody, you know, not everybody, but some people have had you know questions on on how I do it and what I do and what my style is because. Yeah, it's a signature style. It's like cell shading. I love it. Yeah, yeah. Um, so here's what I do. So after after my figure is all complete and I'm there with the construction, sometimes it's arms from this figure, legs from this figure. I yeah. figured out the joints. I did all the sculpting. I'm happy with the overall look. I used to rip it all apart again and paint and put it back together. Mm -hmm. But I find that too much rip was wearing on the joints too much, was wearing on the, you know, the overall aesthetic of the figure, you know, trying uh, to force them back in after I'd take out the butterfly shoulder and then try to get it back in. Let me, let me get you to get that again, because I had a little bit of a, of a hiccup. Sorry about that. No worries. Uh, what I was saying is I used to do it, what most of the serious folks do um, and, you know, hats off to them as I used to take it apart and then put it all back together. I don't mm -hmm. do that anymore. Uh, so after I have my figure, 
I, I use my base spray paint based on what the color is. If the legs are green, then I'll, you know, I'll tape the top and I'll just do the legs. And how I'll mm -hmm. do the legs is I'll bend them down. So I get, you know, the spray paint, you know, where, where the joints are. Um, instead of uh, sanding things down, I found that using a little exacto knife on where the joint hinges are, and I just shave, you know, a millimeter or two off, then I don't get the paint rub when I'm, you know, opening and closing the knee or elbow, whatever it is. But I'll do the spray paint on that, you know, so if it's a green or a tan. So like with this guy, spray painted his pants first, a tan. Um, and then after the spray paint is done, I'll paint with what my base color is going to be. So like a tan or a green. And then I'll wash it. And the wash, so wash, most people leave the wash for the last. I do the wash at the first. Okay. And the wash is just meant to really go into the creases of the folds to create shadow, to create depth. Each one of my figures has about six to eight layers of paint on it. So the first layer is the spray paint. The second layer is the base coat of the overall color, like the base color. The third step is the wash. After the wash is done, the wash is set in in the folds, then I'll go back over with my second color, the base color, and I'll paint the majority of the figure again, leaving out just those pieces of, um, shadow like so this guy is sub-zero who i'm gonna post this weekend oh yeah oh that's you so he was you know I, I based him with uh codex gray spray paint then i washed him with known oil then i came back with uh Ultheron gray or maybe it was codex gray um but i just left the deep deep recesses in mm -hmm. there and it's tough to tell on this but um oh, it shows so up great. That, that's the base color the, the shade or the the wash and then the base color again now I'll take a highlight color and a base color. I'll mix them 50-50 and I'll do a layer of highlight. And then I'll do another layer of highlight with the next color up. And then I'll probably do a final layer of just hitting out specific details on him. Like, okay. uh, yeah. like for this guy's shirt. I don't know if you can tell too well. So like, a lot of like of techniques that you would use in miniatures, I'm seeing. Right. Like it's that's what you're applying to the. Direct translation. Yeah. Direct translation and those that have done 40k or Warhammer mm -hmm. Fantasy recognize it immediately. It's not yeah. it's not magical. I'm certainly not the first person to have ever done this. This is a technique that Games Workshop taught me when I was 10. That's and awesome. That that whole world has evolved immensely, and their paint line, the Citadel paint line, has just bloomed in terms of all the technical washes, colors, highlights, yeah. dry brushes, all of that. Um, and that's primarily the paint brand I use is uh, the Citadel brand. I like the P3 paints as well. Mm -hmm. um, actually, those are primarily the two I use. Um, but anyway, it's base color, wash, base color, and then I build up highlight layers to really create that effect of shadow and depth and highlight. And that's, you know, my, my goal, my aesthetic is to have them look like they just stepped off the comic book page. No, that's that's exactly how they look, man. They they look incredible. And of course, we are joined by none other than Anthony Romo, Tony Figs himself. How's it going, man? Pretty good, pretty good, man. Got off work. I'm hanging out now. <laughs> uh, I nice. I feel extremely lucky. I'm joined with two of my favorite customizers uh, in the community right now. Um, I wanted to show y'all something real quick. This is a kit bash I'm doing, uh, courtesy of Jay's Armory on Etsy also known as one per case. Uh, for those who want to know, here is the info. Uh, I would say check him out. Uh, his store, he's going to be moving around. There's some things going on so he could use the help, but he still has plenty of stuff. I love that eel. I love that eel. No tease. No tease. You gotta... <laughs> that's, the Jay's Ar that's the Jay's Armory vest right there on him. Yeah, man. Can I see it again? Yeah, yeah and that's also Muchas Garcia's um head sculpt oh, right yeah it's uh it's mochas garcia's head sculpt and uh his the, the the fins and then he's got the rifle and then he did the backpack too i use a lot of mochas stuff he is a wizard yes. yeah Joaquin garcia awesome. sorry about that. oh i love yeah. that guy yeah it's uh yeah joaquin is a cool guy he's got the little the hoses from the helmet to the backpack and I set it off with um, Jay's Armory's um, body armor. Nice. Yeah. 
Yeah, and I have the female version of that that I still need to paint. It takes paint very well. Yeah, as that's you've a, all yeah, seen. that's a female one of this. Yeah. Yeah. Nice. Uh, oh, yeah, man. Uh, you'll be able to. It's all in the episode. Uh, Giles was dropping mad science on that. Like, I'm definitely going to be taking a page out of that. And also, really, what I took took from it was just go. Like, yeah, don't, absolutely. Don't put it off and just yeah. go for it. Don't worry about being a perfectionist. Don't worry about like it's gotta be it's gotta be exactly how it's like no it's it has to be what it is and once you start yeah. bringing that to life like it'll show you like our our buddy fixer chris johnston said like let the figure speak to you i was yep. like this is a lot of zen moment right now i feel like i went to like figure monastery today like it's <laughs> oh like, yeah it feels great <laughs> oh yeah <laughs> well it's, uh, you know it's it's fun it's fun it's meant to be fun if you're not having fun doing it why do it it's yeah. meant to be a hobby so I, yeah. I personally, it's 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 my zen. It's it's where I recenter. So uh, I I highly suggest if, if somebody's watching this and thinking about you know starting, just jump into it. I I have never left a question unanswered that anybody's ever asked. I've never Definitely. not helped if anybody's asked. You know, it, it's 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 a super supportive community with so many great talents, so many great people. Um, and I mean, at the end of the day, we're making toys. It's supposed yeah. to be fun. Let's keep it okay. fun. And uh, I'd say keep making toys, make toys, have fun. Yeah, no. And I know yeah. you two, um, I want to give a special props to you in particular for both being involved as first responders uh, in the medical community. Uh, thank you for your service and your contributions um, to, you know, the towns where you live at, the cities, the, uh, the communities and families that you help out on a daily basis. Um, yeah. as medical professionals. And I just want to say thank you all very much. My that means pleasure. a lot, brother. That means yeah. a lot. Thank you. Thank you. Tony, I was telling Kevin at the beginning of the episode, uh, I got into this during the first lockdown. Oh, yeah. I was, I was studying for the EM board exam and I found oh. the classified figures and uh, I just ordered some as kind of a reward. All right, if I get through these 5,000 <laughs> questions, I'll play these toys. And yeah. I got them and I said, well, these are cool, but you know, maybe I can apply my Warhammer paints you know, painting styles to these and that's yeah. how it blossoms. So if it wasn't for this pandemic, I wouldn't be customizing. Wow. That's right? crazy. Yeah. 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 I started with Marvel legends. <laughs> I got, I started customizing Marvel legends and you know, ones that we didn't have or ones that I wanted to make better in my own eyes. And then I had so much left over cause I'm kind of done and I'm just cherry picking Marvel legends here and there. I'm using so much of them for customs now to make that, you know, more GI Joes that we don't have than the yeah, yeah. Bad, so. I was talking to Kevin uh, earlier, I think before we started filming, uh, Valiverse makes a great line. The classifieds make a great line, but for mine, I've used Ghostbusters. I've used Power Rangers. I've yeah. used every Marvel Legend Black series. <laughs> I've used, I'm, I'm looking at my fodder bin right now. It's just, I've used everything that I think might work. And oh, yeah. surprisingly, they're, they're all mostly interchangeable you sometimes you have to do a little bit of you know finagling to get you know oh, one yes. elbow from one figure into another one but right you can make it work big time oh yeah yeah i i feel inspired i can't wait to shred all this stuff and and really jump in um this uh keep your eyes peeled with this i've been teasing it for a while and once i'm done putting everything up it's it's go time i can't wait um gentlemen as always, it's always a lovely time back at the Terror Um Once again, well, you can find you can find uh, Giles Gifford on Instagram, Yojo A R A H, one of the best custom grams online, and my homie my homie Tony's Figs, also on Instagram. Um, man, I I feel I it's going to be a lot of fun. Uh, this has been a Black Genghis on behalf of Geeks Have Game. That's what kind of mood. Uh, gentlemen, enjoy the rest of your weekend and everybody else. Um, enjoy the rest of your, whatever it is you're watching this. Uh, <laughs> Thank you so much for having me. Tony, uh, next time we'll coordinate schedules better, bud. Yeah, yeah, so. yeah no doubt. Man, I got I to gotta watch this episode. That's, that's <laughs> everything I missed. <laughs> it's it's been a blast. I'd love to come back. All right, nice. awesome. We'd love to have you back. All right, peace, everybody. Bye, guys. Take care of yourselves. Be safe. All right, see you guys.